I'd like to call a regular meeting to order at 740, please. Can we wait till 741 just so I can get up and stretch? <laughs> Uh, go back to your old seat, or are you going to stay there? I know, huh? Well, How Bob's not here, so it's just not right. How many students received a text or a notice from me? I was wondering how you how you sent that when you were just sitting there. I know, and I'm Bob. curious as to see how you got one. Okay, got there you go. This is what we talk about when we're like the Twitter and all of that communication with the students. That's with the uh, with the stakeholders. Our stakeholders are right here. Most schools are study hard. Yes, we're going to do that. Yes, we are. Oh, best academic students. Cindy, are you ready? I'm ready. Cindy, let's sit down. Ready. Let's get to it. We're we'll calling the meeting order at 7:40. First, we're going to review the minutes from February 13th. Do we have a first, second on the minutes from February 13th? Move it, accepted. Second. All in favor, except for Judy and Damien. Well, I want to. I want to recuse. <laughs> Get it going. Go ahead. I'm having hot flashes. I'm sorry. Oh, it's so hot over here. It's so hot over here. It's hot over here. Let me tell you. Okay. So maybe it's going to be 15 inches of snow, and we're sweating here tonight. I know. Patty, financial statement, please. Okay. Oh, so tonight you signed off on 29 warrants. Totaling one million five thirteen seven oh one point three nine. Uh, I did send you out the financial report and it did not have any notes to it this month because there really aren't any changes. Um, and to be put perfectly honest, I didn't have a lot of time to really dig into it because we had the migration and the, it was down for a day and we're having some migration okay. issues that it keeps kicking us all out. So I had limited access to the database. So the, I'll have a more comprehensive report in April. Thank you. Anybody have any questions for Patty? Okay, time for public comment. Any public out there want some comments? <laughs> Who's the head of your group? Why don't you come on up front over here? I just want to say thank you guys for waiting an hour and 40 minutes. That shows, I don't, I have an idea what you're going to talk about, but it shows commitment to your cause to wait here for an hour and 40 yes, minutes. Yes, thank you for waiting. And we're going to reward you by not making you come to school tomorrow. <laughs> or maybe Thursday. But I can't guarantee that. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see what they say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Alyssa Aladef. Scott Beagle, Martin Duque Anguiano, Nicholas Dworet, Aaron Feiss, Jamie Gutenberg, Chris Hickson, Luke Hoyer, Kara Logren, Gina Montalto, Joaquin Oliver, Elena Petty, Meadow Pollock, Helena Ramsey, Alex Salter, Carmen Centrum, Peter Wang. We will remember. These are the names of the 17 people who died in the February 14, 2018 shooting in Parkland, Florida. These are the people who were killed in the shooting but they weren't the only victims who suffered. Countless others have been scarred emotionally. They're never gonna be able to look at a school the same way again. To memorialize these victims, schools across the country will be taking part in a walkout at 10 a.m. on March 14th next week. Locally, Pioneer Valley, Pioneer Valley Regional High School, Mohawk Trail Regional High School, 
Turner's Falls High School, and Northampton High School will be some of the local participants in this national walkout. Hundreds of students are going to be taking a stand, expressing themselves against a tragedy which has wrought fear in learning environments. And that's just in Massachusetts. When we look beyond the state borders, students are uniting to make their voices heard. Frontier students are making a stand for what we feel is right and to be a part of the voice across the nation standing against violence in schools. We as students need to have a say in the matters of our own country, our own home. To take our stand, students will leave the school building as a part of this national event for 17 minutes, one minute for every victim. To help promote our own safety, we'll move to the front grass areas of Frontier, out in the front of the building. Seeing as how we're remaining on school grounds, the area is considered to be one of the safest places possible for us to be. At the same time, we can still make our voices heard and we can still have a say. We can show that our voices matter. As a community of individuals who will soon become a part of the adult world, we want our voices to be heard along with thousands of other students across the nation. We as students need to know that we have a say in our world too, because someday, somehow, we too have to make an impact upon it. This is the one place where we can make that impact. We want our voices to be heard now, especially after the crisis of Parkland, because now is a time when it truly matters. We thank you for your time. Thank you. Public out there who has a comment? Yeah, yeah, what if all that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do we have the student advisory person here tonight? We do not. Okay. Come on. <laughs> Pick one. <laughs> uh, you want to talk next about the Frontier Regional Building Renovation Committee subcommittee? Um, I, you know, I kind of talked about it in the. Um, um, excuse me. Uh, as a second, I'm in here. The, uh, I talked a little bit about when the, the question was asked um, by the Conway, by the Conway, by the Conway um, uh, what was it, town manager. Um, so we had a meeting last week, um, and we had a, uh, Joe Mark Heron from Burcog came, and he kind of gave us a great outline of um, the process to take. And one of the things he asked us to look at was creating a capital improvement stabilization fund from the regional committee. So we're gonna kind of put together what that looks like and bring it back to school committee to vote on possibly creating it. Um, not prepared tonight to talk about the ins and outs of it because I don't know all the ins and outs of it and how it affects the regional agreement, the regional agreement or the regional, regional committee. Um, we also are discussing, we have a lot of projects up front including the track, which is a big price. So looking for possibly borrowing money, looks like it's going to be, um, at first we're trying to figure out a way to go around borrowing, um, but it looks like because of the first year needs, um, especially that high price of the track, um, that we may have to we may have to borrow. So we're looking to do some sort of combination of borrowing and creating a five to 10 year plan with a capitalization fund from the towns. Don't know how that looks, you know, how that's going to spell out, but I'll tell you, Joe is extremely knowledgeable and he's done hundreds of these and um, he used to work for the DOR and then he also worked on, uh, has been with FERCOG for many years and basically his title is he's a municipal finance specialist and he really talks the walk, uh, talks the talk, uh, or walks the talk. Uh, yeah. So I was impressed with him. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what we're gonna pull together here and bring back to you. But, um, you know, like I said, one of the things right off would be creating a capital improvement stabilization fund. Um, I don't know if we'll look at that at the next meeting or the meeting following, but uh, bring that forward some sort of capacity so that we have Thank you. Patty, you're next. 
I am. Okay. Yeah, let's, so, let's talk about this budget and let's vote on it. Okay, so I think uh, we need a proposal um, to adopt uh, the FY19 operating budget of ten million seven sixty five three hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars so moved second anybody else have any more questions about the budget all in favor so passed thank you and then we need a second motion to adopt the uh, transportation budget of two hundred and eighty three thousand seventy six dollars so moved second any questions? All in favor? I guess that's it. Thank you. Okay, the next thing is uh, new business. We're going to talk about some of these nice procedures that some of you hopefully uh, have, have read at home. I know some of us are on the uh, policy committee, subcommittee, and um, I think Lynn, you want to? Sure. Um, again, thank you to everyone that's spending their time with us at the policy Here. committee. We've probably tackled about everything except the ones that were already recommended, but we're working hard on it and uh, we're doing great. So the, uh, my understanding is we're presenting them for a first read uh, to the school committees this month and then next month when we have the joint school committee then we will be voting on them. So in your packets, if I'm not mistaken, in your packets you will see what is being changed either strike through or in red. All of that information was given to you and these were the, uh, the what we have been working on and it is Bill Marapizzi, Phil, Bob, Mary, and Greg, Greg, um, got the chalk. So uh, we've been, there's a core group we've been working on, then we have another meeting this Thursday. So I don't Question know if we read it out loud or. We don't have that kind of time. No. no. There is, that is actually the way a lot of places do it. But this is, a, this is an enormous amount And we're trying to, we're, and, and we're trying to get them, we're going to try to have them done by the end of the year. I mean, we have a lot. Yeah. This is a big bunch here. We're hoping to bring another bunch up at the probably the joint meeting the joint. in April. We'll bring another big batch of them. Yeah, Weather so committee. Well, we How do you want our questions? Do you want them sent? Do you want questions tonight? Do you want? Um, I I would ask you to send your questions, and we'll be prepared to answer them for the joint school committee next month. I would say um, the beauty would be if we could vote on these they'll immediately go on to our website. If we vote and we all agree, then they'll immediately go on to our website. There's a few that need further discussion by the whole committee, but not that many. Uh, they're pretty much self-explanatory. They're updated due to laws, changes in laws, and we pulled out some procedures from the policy. It was fun. As we started, the ones we had in our book, they added, yeah. they added another four on top of us the last meeting, so. We, uh, we do have a meeting on Thursday, but the following meeting from that will be dedicated to uh, our technology, um, you know, our uh, rules and regulations, acceptable use policy. We, we want to trim the acceptable use policy that is in the policy book or in online, but our procedures are like this thick. So we really want to look at that. And so that will take a probably a whole meeting, depending on how that goes um then i just i don't know if i should request that we have an executive session for next month because um on your when i was looking through these the personnel policies and procedures as i remember last month we took no action on longevity that was in the contract and now i see it shows up in the policy i, I i'm next. sorry that looks a little sneaky that we're spending this money we're not spending it that we well, this is this is a negotiation thing. This is budget. This isn't something you just throw out and nine, say we didn't get our way last nine, month. Now we're doing for it nine again. Non union personnel, non union, non union, non union personnel. The, that that longevity. Sense. The twenty five, thirty, I like and forty. I want to see money in here that we haven't had a discussion on. 
Well, that's why we're having a policy having, on it, so we can just. I know, but so if it's be money, then it's budget. If it's budget, then it's a negotiation that we're spending this. This is this is money out of the budget. I, I actually am going. Um, I'm going to second her motion for an executive session. I just session. want to um, be just, able to just have just because a that whole this committee. does. Oh yeah. Because this yeah. does impact on um, uh, collective yeah, bargaining executive plans. Session? Uh, well, it, 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 but it's not collective bargain if it's not union. No, but th this is the rationale for our collect. This is part of the rationale for upcoming for upcoming collective bargaining. So, to that extent, to the extent that w when we really talk about why we want to do some of these things, it's a collective bargaining strategy. And um, so, to that extent, she's she. she the, if we really want to sit down and be able to say everything that was going on. Why, why we really want to do X, Y, and Z. It, it is ultimately about the collective bargaining strategy. And so she is. But it has, not, but it has nothing it, to do with unions. It has nothing to do with collective bargaining, but it is informed by our future collective bargaining what, strategy. One of the so things that we did discuss was waiting till the fall and having a, another subcommittee to come together just to work on the policies and procedures for non-union employees, which include our custodians, our secretarial staff, our clerical staff. And that was one of the things that came up. And we thought we would do that for other things, uh, vacation time, et cetera. And if we want to put longevity in there, it's fine. It'll still be done before the budgeting season begins. This is not for this year's budget. This is, this is to, to get ready for next year's budget the year down below like fy20 to, FY20. you are now, adding dollar amounts to fy20 budget dollar amounts that if we vote this are in so we are already voting for a budget that hasn't even been created yet and if that's the case if this is non-union employees and that what the heck am i voting on that policy for to begin with if i have no say in their longevity and 40 years, $1,500, it's only, it's almost blue. I don't understand why you think you don't have any say. That's what we're bringing. Well, that's what that's I'm what saying I do. That's what we're bringing. That's here. my question. Why are, we had a conversation about longevity last year, last month. And yet now, without having a conversation, we are just, somebody came up with numbers for people for FY2. I, I, I just think where there's any money that's going to be like this. We should have that conversation before we vote, before this happens. Well, I think as part of that policy, you're going to explain why why it's come up at all. Well, and I'm that, asking that we, we set aside an executive exactly. session. That's what you're I, I that, think, that's I my think, original that, thing, yeah. and that's my reasoning. Is so the, the whole now I have to go through this page this by page. Yeah. yeah, that works for me. And I, I, I we can put on the next next meeting because mm -hmm. this is the first reading. You, you know, you've read it for now for maybe a week or so. You'll have another three or four weeks to read it before the next meeting. And we'll have an executive session for. And it would be the collective bargaining session yeah. of that. Or you better you make you better make damn sure that these policies fall into the guys that you can have an executive session for, because I'm not sure they do. Well, that's that's not really if if that's not the case, then Bill, then we can't do it. But if I I, I just don't understand how you can just add monies to this is our budget and we're just adding monies to it parameters of executive session are pretty narrow yeah they are so then we can discuss it in an open meeting but if we can have an executive session about it i think we should if we can, if can right. then we discuss it in an open meeting i don't, know I don't, I don't have a problem that. with that either that. no that's, that's fine is that's there fine. is is there a chance that we could pull it and you know make a motion to pull it and then just develop a, a subcommittee for policies and procedures for non-union employees to look at the whole uh, agreement that we have with them uh, and, and start a I have no problem month. with discussing it next year. I mean, next year, sorry, it's late. Next month, I have no problem with that. I was just asking for an executive session because it involved money yeah. and it looked like it involved um, possible negotiations or it should involve negotiations because it's money, then it's budget, we have control of that, et cetera. But if it doesn't fall under executive committee, I have no problem with discussing it in an open meeting. I don't anyways, I don't know about anybody else, but I don't. Well, I just want to do it right as so a, I guess somebody a policy else committee. that knows that stuff has to check into that, whether it's legal or not. Us as a policy committee, we went 
a couple different meetings to try to get some deciphering what we were going to do with that <coughs> policy. And this policy has been, this part of the policy has been put on the back burner for the last quite a few years. That's why we're trying to bring it forward, not for this next budget, but the budget afterwards. That's why we were bringing it up. They have at least get this part rolling. If you can't understand that, I mean, that's. Do you at least understand that we're spending money that we haven't even budgeted for? We're not, we're it's not as bad as policy. it looks on paper once we're, we get to talk about it. Anything. It looks better. It, it is better than it looks, right? Really? In, in red, there's there's numbers, there's monies. There's no. But nothing's there. approved, Cindy. That's, nothing's been changed. In one hand, give we're it We're bringing one. the discussion. So again, to move it along, if we can have an executive session, I would love it. If we cannot, then we need to be prepared to discuss it in open it, session. And we do, we do have a chart that shows the impact to the schools in 2020, mm -hmm. the impact to each of the, the four school budgets That's and fine. Frontier. You gotta remember, if you're looking at the years there, just to let you know the years, who we're looking at, the, the it's not even a percentage, it's a, it's a person here and there that it's relating to, if you're looking at the years, the 25, the 30, and the 40 year longevity. And when you look at those in totality, one hand giveth and one hand taketh away. So we, when we get to talk and about please, that. Pl so. Please do not do that again. Don't tell me who these people are that have been here for Thank 30 you. years or 40 years. Thank you. Like we did the last time, names. We don't want names. I don't want to know. I didn't. We have two that have been here for 40 years. We've got three that have been here for 30. These are the people we're talking about. And I don't care if it's Lynn and Judy and Mary. I don't care. Don't Please don't tell me that. So I don't want to know. We're not telling you. Good. Moving along. So you, there again, next meeting, if you have any questions, if you want to email Lynn, she'll pass it on to the subcommittee if you have any questions about them. There's, you know, there's quite a bit to read, but there's only certain changes in, in here, and they're highlighted. Um, and then, okay. next month is a joint meeting? Yes. So you're going to have, we're going to have this discussion with 72 people in the room? See you in May. Unless you want to pull it. No, I think. For a joint I, meeting? I, I like the idea because part of this, it was the joint meeting that initially came, up, came in, I came up so. with um, a, a, a way to reduce our retirement costs in general. And some of this policy is aligning the non-union personnel with the direction that the joint meeting initially decided um, the, uh, at the time of Lynn's hiring on. And, and it's about being in a position where administration, non-union, and then union are, are all able to be uh, 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 amended or what, uh, made fair or whatever. It, it, the towns are going to, it, it's better for the towns, it's better for the community. And we're trying to make everything fair and develop a consistent thing so that we can go to the union um, when everything's, but it's all, it's all together. But it, it, you know, I don't, it, it doesn't sound logical to me to put 27 people in a room to have a discussion and try to vote on something that night. I agree. It, then they've done that. But don't we usually have a joint meeting and then our separate meeting? And aren't you talking about having this? I don't know. Maybe that's maybe she's maybe Lynn's right. I don't know. This this impacts all five districts. These policies will be the policies for all five of our districts. This is more or less. This isn't even going to be with our MASC policies. This is what Frontier Regional and Union Thirty Eight do for their non-union employees. Okay. So getting questions to you would be essential to keep the conversation moving in our group. Sure. Darius, okay. <coughs> do you have anything to share with us for report tonight, sir? I do. <laughs> wow. Sadly. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I have Allison here to present. And I'm sorry, but we've been putting this off, waiting for a best meeting, and then if we don't do it tonight, we're gonna to put it off, we won't do it to join. But anyways, uh, we are taking on pass along. <clears throat> we are, gonna be short. you're gonna be short. Allison knows how to be short. Allison's put in tremendous. Are you on the, are you on the, are you on the agenda? This I is part of my principal. I'm here as, as the union president. I'm here as social studies teacher and social studies department. Okay. So just taking you. 
Capstone. Capstone. Well, she's part of my principal's report. So she's so basically what we've been working on, I've talked about it at other meetings, is we've been putting together the AP Capstone program to release next year. And um, and Allison's done a, a lion's share of the work here and is also going to be the, the, the first teacher to teach the AP Capstone um, course. And so she's kind of going to give a quick run view of what it is. It's a nice positive thing after a night of um, of sad budgets and, and sad national issues and such. This is actually um, where we're improving um, delivery of um, AP curriculum and preparation for college. So it's actually, um, I think, exciting stuff. So how about that motivational speech? So Allison, why don't you kind of give us a rundown of what is, what are we doing here? Why are we doing it? Um. Good evening, everyone. I will try and be short. I do not want to go through every single one of these slides. More of them are for your information than for me to go over. Um, what we are starting next year is the AP Capstone program, which is a new program that is being opened up around the country. Um, it is something that has been created to parallel the IB program, the International Baccalaureate type program, where you've got an opportunity for students to learn skills, but also reach a little bit higher if they want to for something more than just a high school diploma. They can get an AP capstone diploma, or they can get an AP capstone certificate. It's a new type of program that is not content driven, it's skill driven, and it is a um, there are two parts to it. Um, under Capstone, there is the certificate, which is taking two courses in a two-year sequence. The first course is AP Seminar, and that's a course that teaches students to um, understand arguments, to understand perspective. Um, if you look at this slide here, um, it is a course that prepares students to move on to the second year, which is AP Research. In AP Caps, uh, in AP Seminar, they um, the students do three performance tasks that they're assessed on. One is a group project, a group presentation, and an individual project. The first part of the course. The second part of the course, there is stimulus material that is provided that. I will be instructing the students to decipher and understand, and then they create an individual project, an individual research paper, and they have to do a presentation and a defense of their research, and then they do an exam. So it's a very skill-driven course. The second year, they do AP research, where they start working on an independent research project right from the beginning of the year and are guided through the process um, and they create a large, it, it's like an honors thesis and they have to do a defense at the end of the year and if they score threes or above in seminar and research they can get a capstone certificate. If they, in addition, take four other AP classes and get threes or above, they can get an AP capstone diploma. And so schools have to apply to become capstone schools. We did the application last summer. Um, the first course, I put a little bit of information in here. Um, the first seminar course I'm doing, I'm doing training this summer because teachers have to go through the training before they're allowed to teach the class. So I'm doing my seminar training this summer. And I'm gonna be doing an interdisciplinary course on human rights. And so we're gonna be looking at human rights from the local to the global. And um, that's the first part is theme-based. The second part is student-driven based on the materials in these stimulus packets that, that um, College Board sends to us. And we, you know, we can teach the material. Um, and so this is exciting. There are um, only three Western Mass, um, we will be the third Western Mass public school that's doing this because Pittsfield and Wilbraham, um, Munson, no, um, Minichon, their public school down there is doing it. And there are two private schools in Western Massachusetts, and that's it so far. So this is a very new program for us to add. It's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. Does anybody have questions? 
So this one, and this is just in keeping with the budget theme for tonight. <coughs> is, 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 but is this going to have an impact on the budget in terms of additional or higher payments needing to be made to the owner of the AP trademark? Um, so what is the budget impact? So the budget impact is that we've already budgeted for professional development, which will pay for Allison's um, training this year, and then future educators will have to be trained as well. Um, but that's already been that's already within the budget, and we've been sending people to AP trainings for years. Um, the test itself, this one, this test itself is a hundred, and it's a that's 142. So it's more expensive than the actual AP test, the, the regular whatever test. Um, we are looking at. You know, I have money in a guidance budget that I have for testing that we um, I plan on using to help subsidize some of that. Um, it also will go on to those families that can afford it. So it's a little bit of both. So right now we don't, no student is denied an AP course for failure to be able to pay for the AP exam. Um, and then there's also a sliding scale within AP for free and reduced lunch. So while I could lie and say it doesn't, won't cost the school anything, there's still be costs within there. Um, but it's not, it's really not as much as compared to the idea of, again, selling this program is right now we have a lot of students taking a lot of AP courses and they don't know when enough is enough. This kind of focuses in that you're gonna take these two courses that are every other day courses, okay, year long, each year. And so we also have changed our AP classes, several of our AP classes, to go every other day to match, to fold in with it. And so now we have students who are, if you want how do I, what do I get the most out of? I just keep on taking AP and I'll take AP online. And we actually have students that are kind of overkill. This is gonna focus them in. You're, you're going for an AP diploma, okay? You're gonna take the four AP courses, you're gonna take these two courses, um, and it's very doable. And so, um, I don't wanna say very doable. It's very doable for that top, you know, the, the top 10% um, may attempt to go after, or even top 5% may attempt to go after an AP diploma. Um, but that does not, you gotta remember that 50% of our students take an AP class, okay? So we have a lot of students taking AP classes, and this also, as Allison talked about, goes after a different type of students, because it's skill-based and not, you know, how much you can keep up here and regurgitate later, um, and which will be very interesting, and we're interested to see if, what the success is for different types of students that can really deliver on the spot versus being able to memorize and regurgitate lots of information. So it's very... Uh, Theories, how does this affect the student's GPA? Um, it continues to go up. So our GPA has has gone up quite a bit since the, you know, we used to have just a few AP courses and then uh, when Marty Barrett was here, we had the, Sarah Huffman was the name of that grant? Yeah. All right. STEM grant. The STEM, STEM. We, had a, we had a STEM grant that allowed us to have, bring in more AP courses and they help pay for the training and they also gave like motivation stuff to students to take it. Each time a student takes an AP course, you know, we're on a 4.0 scale, they get above, a, they're on a 5.0 scale. So now our top GPA is like a 4.6. But you have to remember that the way colleges look at, um, the way the colleges look at GPA is they look at you compared to your peers and what your peers were allowed to take for the same GPA number. So this will be a rolling to work this out with guidance, but and guidance wants to work out with me. Um, it's a rolling change in GPA offerings that's going to roll out. So you're compared to your graduating class. Each year is different. For example, so if if your school, if you had a school down the street that didn't have AP courses, okay, um, their GPA they would be they would not be comparing their GPA versus our GPA. They will, however, be care, looking at the course load and how rigorous it is, and because an AP course is nationally standardized, you know, they're gonna know the quality level of that course. So this really, I'm hoping, you know, as we talk about marketing the school, this is marketing for what are we doing, um, you know, for that, 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 top, that top level student who's looking at private schools because they're saying we don't, we're not delivering here at Frontier. This is, I, you know, it is the best, um, you know, the, one of the best programs you can put out there, and we're on the cutting edge of it. Um, and I, I, you'll see a lot of this in a lot of the schools in the next few years will be, will be jumping on board. And maybe this is something that the students can take to the sixth graders as opposed, you know, the <coughs> students who are successful in this or in this course, how they were talking tonight, maybe this is something um, if parents are there also. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know how much a sixth grader is going to grab, whew, 
Please tell me that Four Rivers is in an AP school. Good. We got something on that. No, the two private schools is Deerfield Academy and Wilbraham. Wilbraham Winston. Oh. Oh. And so we went to Deerfield Academy last year. We talked with their teachers about this. We sat in on one of the classes, see what the classes looked like, see what the curriculum looked like. Um, you know, the person at Deerfield Academy is one of the uh, creators, uh, what's the word to use, that, they, that is a consultant with um, with the AP program in creating this. So we, we were able to get on kind of the front line. This is what it's about and, and who who's taking the course and who's successful on it. And that's what we're really talking about. It's gonna be interesting to see I think we're going to see different types of students that are going to be, you're, still, you're going to have your, your whiz is we're going to be successful at anything they do. But this is going to, I think, is also going to avenue a lot of interest so far this year. Um, I think we're close to 30 signups um, for the course. After scheduling and people having to make choices, that's going to come down. Um, so it'll be interesting to see, but there's a lot of, there's, there's a lot, lot of, of it's also the scheduling. It's an every other day course. I think students are, have some alert of that. Um, and yeah. It'll be fun. That's the nice way to put it. It's every other day. If they're taking two AP courses, are they the same every other day, or do they? Is it like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday? And it's every other day versus it's odd and even. So our schedule is based on the day of the week. Right. So that way, so if what would happen is if they are taking, give me an example. Human geography human, and seminar. If you take human geography, AP human geography, which is also a year long course. So you'll have every other day, you're gonna have AP Human Geography versus <clears throat> AP Seminar. That's if you're doubling an AP. You could be taking, your opposite could be band, right. or your That's opposite could be phys ed or health or an art class. Are the, are the AP courses the same every other day, or? So if you're taking two, are you taking the same, the t same two courses on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or are you taking one on Monday, one on Tuesday? One on Monday, one on, no, it depends on how the Sorry, schedule, I, that, that, I hear what you're saying, it depends on how we roll out the schedule. So how the schedule works, it was really boring, I was getting late, but we get all the signups, we run it through a matrix to figure out who signed up and where it fits. So if we have, we're gonna have some of them that we hand kind of pick to make it happen, but for instance, you know, we always have phys ed, well, this is an easy one. Phys ed always runs opposite of band. And one semester in health, the other semester. That way kids can take band and get their physics and health during that same block period. Does that make sense? We're gonna do the same thing with the APs. We have to see which ones they sign up for because you have a lot of different APs and you generally have those who go math, science, and those who go English, humanities, and then a mixture there too. So it's gonna be, so I understand what you're saying. It does, it's the same class other one, but what will it be depends. It's possible that it, it'll, it's possible maybe another, another, another every other day course um, that goes opposite to it, but I have a feeling it's gonna be locked with human geography. It's, it's, but, that's, cause it's that kind of student that will get the most hits to make that happen. Okay. Is this just gonna be junior signing up for next year because it's a two year course? So, um, no. no, the juniors are, Sophomores, First, and then there's I've got at least one senior who is trusted to <coughs> taking it just because of the experience of being able to take it. it presentation skills, writing, group work, and individual work are all part of this. So it's I mean there are many skill sets that the the students are going to be working on. The largest number are juniors, but there are also sophomores that have signed up for it. I mean, with just a two-year course, you have to roll it out at some point. There are some kids that are going to not have the chance, but I was just wondering how many seniors would. No, what we're going to do, no, good question. We are going to, uh, the way we have it set right now, and I have the, I carry the right to change anything as things go along, but right now, the way we have it is Allison's going to teach the seminar, and then she's going to teach the research, and I'm going to have somebody else be teaching the seminar. And we'll also go with them to teach the research. Okay, and so that, that person we're still working on. We have several conversations going, so it'll be a two-year loop. So we will offer seminar and research next year. Okay. Okay, so that all students can have access to all the things. And so, um, yeah, and that's where... The, the only limitation is you can't do research unless you've done seminar, right? Because it's got a skill set that, that you're learning, this quest, which there's a slide in here about it, that research, the prerequisite for AP research is AP seminar. So it's the two year, it's the second. But you can still go on into AP research if you didn't get a three in seminar as well. If you only get a two or one, you can still do it if you wanted the experience of being able to do the research. You 
you just wouldn't be allowed, you wouldn't be able to get a certificate um, to work as well. But the skills, in, in many ways, the skills are, are more important than the score. I can tell you the, the kids get. Gary, do you have anything else you want to share with us tonight? No, I mean, if anybody has any questions regarding the student walkout, I've met with um, student representatives about it. Um, just to, for the general overview that um, we, you know, working out the time, obviously they gave the time, it happened at 10 o'clock, they've given us space, I've worked with local police to make sure that we have additional security because they're going to be outside and there's a street right there just for traffic safety and that kind of issues. Um, they've come up with a plan of what they plan on doing and um, Students who aren't <clears throat> who want to walk out and get in their cars and go to Dunkin' Donuts, and we'll have there will be consequences there. They're not a consequence for. I know it's the big thing. I'm sure you guys maybe got emails and that kind of stuff from different groups out there. But <clears throat> um, that's kind of the, the game plan in place. I've also talked with teachers, um, instructed them that they um, what I'm doing for supervision is I'm asking for volunteers, and so I'm getting volunteer teachers who either have prep or have classes that I can get a, a coverage for that for those 30 minutes. And so I don't we know. met today. The Maybe they can line up around the, the driveway Wednesday. so that the kids can't drive out to Dunkin' Next Wednesday. <laughs> so it's next Wednesday. So, um, it's not that and far so, of a And I also had a conversation with teachers. This is a student organized movement. It's not a teacher's movement. It's not a, there's no public invited. Um, public are asked to be asked to stay out of this. There's one thing on the 24th that's a national wide for the public to get involved in talking about creating safer schools. And I suggest they do that. This is for the kids, for them to come together and do their thing, and then we're just going to provide some oversight. So, any questions on that overall? We've been a lot of conversations with teachers and that kind of stuff, and as in creating, to me, I think the most important thing is that as a community, we work together through it because there is a lot of, as I was explaining to the staff, there's a full spectrum of this walkout. You have those who just want to. Um, you know, walk out in memory of students and, and, and of the students that have passed and, and show respect and ask for, you know, people to acknowledge what's going on and, and looking for change. And then you have the full other end where it's talking about full Second Amendment rights and groups, outside groups putting pressure on onto that. And so um, I think we need to, you know, we kind of talked about we can't make this being a dividing thing within our community. We respect both sides. We talk about that as the teachers today, the teachers. At a faculty meeting, we talked about that as well. And so, um, those students who don't walk out are going to be treated with the same amount of respect to those who do. And you know, we kind of talked about that at length in staff meeting today too. So, to me, that's that's the most difficult part. It's not the walkout. It's the it's about when there's change, when there's difference of opinion on the subject, and having create a you know still a community around it and respecting one another's differences. I know it's a lot to say, but this is one of the, the true things, and that's why. You know, it's why it's a little bit more, it's, it's kind of tricky, but I thought that was really impressive. That was impressive with her. It Emily does. tonight, I mean, yeah. it takes. Yeah, it gave me the chills. Emily, but it, it takes courage. You, she had trouble catching her voice in the beginning because mm -hmm. it takes courage. To, you guys are a scary bunch. <laughs> 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 but I think it was very uh, impactful because, I mean, I, I mean, I, I actually had chills and I almost wanted to cry because it was just so, so nicely well thought out and, and and sympathetic and emotional and things that you don't expect from kids their age. Additionally, forgot I must have my notes here, I am meeting with the middle school faculty on Friday to discuss, we feel like the new middle school needs a little more guidance about what this is about. Um, there are, we, I've gotten already from parents and from students from the middle school who want to participate. Um, I'm looking at what other schools are doing and they're allowing middle schools to participate. So we're going to do some education. We're going to put it together on Friday for early next week to do talk with the students about what's going on, you know, and, and it kind of educate them there as well. Again, not steering them one way or the other. And the teachers have been very good about that. You know, we're not taking sides on that. And it's about um, letting them understand what's going on because I think there are some people that are very active um, students in the middle school and then you have students who have no idea what's going on. Because um, they're middle schoolers, you know. So it's you know getting a balance there. It's a little bit different, and they're going to be treated a little bit more um, with a wing over them, and you know walking out together instead of just kind of letting them go and higher level of supervision that kind of thing. So we're putting that together as well. Anybody else have any questions for Darius? Okay. When you're next, do you have a report? No, I will just add on to uh, Darius. Um, in the elementary, we're taking a different. Uh, 
a different tactic. Uh, what we're going to do is tell the, uh, the parents, the families, the, uh, the, the community members that um, we, although we understand and we recognize the need, we also would like uh, to give the parents the opportunity to decide when and how to speak to their children about violence in school. So we're um, asking the parents if you would like to engage in this activity, if you could come, sign your child out of school, and stay with your child and experience this with your child, and then bring your child back to school. Um, that way, uh, the responsibility for the child being out of school would, would be with the parent, but it's also an experience they could share, and the parent would have a, a piece of that with the child. Um, we are. Uh, going to you know make that message known to the families of the elementary schools we want to go a little more gently and softly our children range from very young to at a point where they are they can be very knowledgeable about what's going on but we also wanted to stress that in the in the elementary schools we do second step anti-bullying uh, they do an awful lot of um, activities that deal with empathy and deal with um, being kind to one another and uh, for instance in Deerfield that they, they've all done a rock and they've decorated a rock and they made a river that shows you know how everyone is connected and, and so um, we just want to give a little bit more of that ownership to the community members the families uh, than just letting young children I appreciate the, the letter that you sent out to all the families, but have, have you had outreach from families to you from the elementary level expressing either they need more engagement in this or saying we don't want them or has been kind of quiet? There's only been one parent from Deerfield, one parent. And um, so in response to that, this is what we're choosing. We want to include the parents in this experience with their children because of the nature of how do they want that information of school violence spoken to to the children. I think it's a great idea. Thank you. Thank you. But it was only one parent out of all, um, I think we have six, seven hundred students at the elementary level, one parent I did ask. Okay, we got one more thing. We're going to go into executive sessions. To executive session pursuit of MGLC 30A section 21A4 to discuss the deployment of security personnel, devices, strategic strategies with respect to their who's, who's invited in. How long? How long? First of all, how long is it going to take? About three or four minutes. Famous last Promise. words. Famous Promise. last words. Yes. Famous Promise. last words. Do not believe a word. You should, the the word. You should okay. the to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.